uh, piping and instrumentation diagrams. Piping and instrumentation uh, diagrams uh, show the piping and related components of a physical process flow. It's commonly used in the, in the uh, engineering field, construction, uh, and facilities management. Uh, process flow diagrams are used in chemical and process engineering. Um, PFDs are not quite as detailed as PNIDs. So here's an example of a PNID of a pump test room. You can see uh, we have a house water tank in the upper left hand corner. Uh, followed by a ball valve that goes to a pump, to another ball valve, to a filter housing, cartridge style filter, to another ball valve, and then the flow goes into a heat exchanger where the water gets cooled, and that cooled water and filtered water goes to the end users and you can see there is a flow indicator at the end users. And then as the end users send out the, uh, uh, give off their heat energy to the water, that warm water then returns back to the house water tank. And then you, if you follow the blue lines, the water cooling tower surge tank on the bottom of the screen has cold water in it. Uh, goes through a ball valve, which is labeled as V7, then goes through a one-way check valve. The cold water supply then travels through yet another ball valve, valve 4, into the heat exchanger. And then the water is then pumped out to the water cooling tower where a fan blows water, or excuse me, the fan blows a column of air uh, up through the... the uh, the water which cools it down and then you can see as it leaves the water cooling tower that cold water goes through an inline filter strainer uh, then it goes through a union and it gets dumped into the water cooling tower and the process repeats itself over and over again you'll see that there is a remote bulb thermostat in the water cooling tower surge tank and in the house water tank um, we can also see that there is a 240 volt motor starter controller that controls the water pump that pumps water out to the water cooling tower. Uh, you see there's a fuse disconnect switch that controls the pump that pumps the water out to the end users in the pump test room. Uh, and then you can also see there is a level indicator on the house water tank as well as a temperature indicator on the house water tank. And the key to the right shows you what all these different symbols mean. Uh, here we have the different uh, type of tags that you'll see on a PNID. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you see a horizontal line through the tag, through the round circle, that means it's a remote location. Uh, Board mounted is a solid horizontal line. Uh, remote location uh, with the, the dashed line is behind a control panel. So on these PNID tags, uh, you'll see that they can indicate temperature, flow, uh, level, pressure. Um, you'll see other common examples on here of uh, what these different letters and numbers mean. So some indicate uh, uh, pressure, uh, some, some also uh, will transmit, indicate like a transmitter. Some will both indicate and transmit, as you can see in this uh, key here. And they usually have a control loop number assigned to them. That's the bottom number in the tag. So the first letter on the tag is a variable being measured. So whether that's flow, pressure, temperature, um, what it does. Does it indicate? Does it record? Does it transmit? And then you also have what type of instrument it is. A, a control valve, a gauge, an alarm, a transducer, a transmitter, etc. 
So this uh, image here, credit to Kim Ray Incorporated, is a PNID reference guide showing a lot of the common symbols uh, for different valves. So gate valves, globe valves, angle valves, butterfly valves, plug valves, ball valves. There's some similarities, but you can look closely and see there's there's some differences. Um, uh, so a hand actuator looks like the capital letter T. Uh, so here are some more symbols that you might find on a PNID uh, from pumps to fan blades. Uh, again, indicators, temp transmitters, temp recorder, flow recorder is FR, temp controller is TC, uh, temp indicator would be TI. Um, here are some storage tank symbols that you might find on a PNID. Here are some heat exchanger symbols you might find on a PNID. And then here are yet some more symbols that you might find on a PNID. So here you can see you have a, uh, a scraper conveyor, overhead conveyor, screw conveyor. Um, you have an elevator, a hoist, skip hoist, um, you know, so different, different symbols. So before creating a PNID from scratch, you need to answer a few questions. Uh, what is the overall process? What does it achieve? Uh, so for example, a compressed air system. Um, you might have an air compressor for a building that supplies air out to the shop for the technicians to use uh, to perform their job. Is the process manual or automatic? Obviously in the case of an air compressor, that's going to run automatically um, and it's going to be the, the cut in and cut out is usually controlled by a pressure switch or an onboard computer for newer models. Uh, what are the inputs coming from and leading to? So. Uh, for example, do you get inputs from temperature sensors, uh, pressure sensors? Do they lead to a SCADA panel? Um, are they just remote only? Do they go to a control room? Again, what is the end product? Are you producing air, uh, steam, cold water, etc.? Um, what are the main system components and the relationship between them? So pumps, uh, valves, gauges, uh, tanks accumulators, etc. And what is the directionality of flow to show what the flow rate, uh, where the flow is going, and what are potential bottlenecks. So as you're designing your PNID, what are the potential bottlenecks in that facility, that building, etc. Uh, you can also color code your PNIDs as you saw in our previous example. So for example, the, the red lines indicated hot water, blue lines indicated uh, chilled water or cooled water. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment for future video topics you'd like me to cover.